packing, a topic that you most encounter when dealing with UVs. And let me quickly dive into what that actually means. So, when mapping textures onto geometry, we need to define how to project the pixels from the actual texture onto the geometry. And we usually do this by mapping 3D space, these coordinates here on that cube, into UV space, which is just a flat plane ranging from the coordinates 0, 0 to 1, 1. And we do this in multiple steps. One of them is UV unwrapping, and this means defining how to peel the 3D surface onto a flat 2D space. And there are many, many ways how you can unwrap a given geometry. For example, this cube here, I could unwrap it like this, or like this, or I could decide to slice it up in individual pieces and unwrap it like this. And these individual pieces here are called islands, UV islands. And the next problem we have to solve is we need to arrange those individual pieces, those islands, in UV space most efficiently. For example, arranging our individual islands like this surely is not the most efficient way for this space, and even scaling them up leaves me doubting if this really is the most efficient packing there is out there. What we're trying to do here is we try to pack our islands as tightly as possible without wasting space in UV. And with more complex meshes than this cube, this gets increasingly challenging. So for example, is this the most efficient packing here? Well, I don't know, because packing is really, really difficult, even for today's algorithms and for today's hardware. And the best we can do for now is try out how to rotate, how to move, how to scale individual islands to make the most out of our UV space. So basically what we're doing here is kind of a brute force attack on packing. Why am I telling you all this? I personally don't really want to deal with UV island packing for now at least, but the cool thing about Houdini's UV tools or the new Houdini UV layout SOP is it can also pack geometry. For example, what it can do is take these A's here, provide it as an input geometry, and then try to pack it most efficiently in this rectangle. But the UV layout SOP can even do more. Let's have a look at this inside of Houdini by dropping down a GeoSOP, diving in there, and in Houdini 17 there is no file SOP to delete. So let's drop down a grid here. Scatter to be one by one, and we only need two rows, two columns, and then scatter some points on it. Also, let's make sure it's oriented in X, Y for now. Scattered a few points here. Let's maybe dial them back to 100, and down here, give them a few more relaxed iterations, or dial back the global C so that we close this hole here, like that. Next, I'm gonna drop down a font sop, highlight this, and I'll just enter A, B, C, as my font up here, and I want to change the font to a trusty old Josephine, like this. Next, I'll use a copy to point to copy this geometry onto our scattered points, and also what I want to do is scale back the font size a bit, and make the individual copies of this font irregular in size, and let's do that with an attrib randomize. I want to randomize the P scale, which is one dimensional between, let's say, 0 0.1 and 1 should be good. Let's wire this in here. And now we have different sizes of our font. So now finally, let's begin with the actual packing by dropping down our UV layout and wiring this up and then highlighting it. And you will see nothing really happening here. That is the first thing that we want to specify is that we do not want to pack into UV coordinates, but into our world space. So instead of UV, we enter P as a UV attribute here. And we can see immediately we get this really weird, nice, cool result of all these individual letters arranged into this one by one square. That's our standard UV space, just a square ranging from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Let's have a look at the few options that are available in the UV layout sub here. So the most important tab maybe is the packing tab here. Currently it's set up to not rotate those letters here. However, I can allow that. For example, rotations around 180 degrees in 90 degree steps and 45 degree steps and so on and so on. And you can see by decreasing our rotation step size here, the packing process takes longer time that is because, as I mentioned, packing still is a difficult problem for today's algorithms and today's hardware. So what we'll have to do is just try out where and how to most efficiently fit all the geometry in this one by one square. And you can further dial in how that's done by going to the advanced tab here and dialing in those two main parameters here, the iterations, that means the number of times the algorithm will try packing this geometry into different configurations, and then the search resolution here. 
So basically, and this is my assumption, correct me if it's wrong, but basically what I think Houdini is doing there, or side effects is doing here, is sampling this one by one plane with a given resolution to find out where there's space left. And with a higher search resolution, Houdini will be able to find smaller spaces that haven't been packed yet. So by increasing this resolution, on the one hand, you increase your cook time. On the other hand, you also find smaller spaces and might be able to pack geometry more efficiently. So that took about forever, but you can see this is the result of our packing operation here. I'd like to dial this back a bit so we can pack a bit quicker. And also I'm gonna dial back the rotation steps to 90 degrees. So this should make for a much quicker packing, as you can see here. So this is the most simple configuration that you could run with the UV layout. So, However, you might ask, what if I don't want to pack these letters here individually? So what if I actually want to pack the word ABC as a whole instead of its individual letters? In order for that, we need to write an attribute onto each individual copy. So UV layout can check which pieces belong to which geometry or which pieces belong to which island in that. So let's highlight the copy to points, zoom out here. And what I want to do is drop down a tiny bit of vex like this. And I just want to create an ID attribute, an integer called ID, and it should be equal to the template points point number. And this will get created or copied over to our copies that we're creating here in this SOP. So what I can tell UV layout now is in the connectivity tab that I want to have islands that are identified by their individual ID attribute. And as every word here now has a different ID, Houdini now won't separate those individual letters by connectivity, but will use the ID attribute to separate the geometry. Let's highlight that. And that did not quite work because I made a mistake here. I didn't take care of the ID attribute being written onto the primitives. So I just have them on the points here, which is needed to create all those copies. However, after my copy sop, I need an attribute promote, and I want to promote the ID attribute from a point primitive and delete the original. Let's wire this in here. And we can now see a much less dense packing, but one that leaves the word order ABC intact. So that's how you pack geometry that is not one continuously connected piece. However, I can do more or we can do more. Let's again uncheck the island attribute here and pack individual characters. But let's create another font, just copying this font up here, pasting it there. Let's just ghost it. Yeah, let's just leave the ABC text in here and just scale it bigger like this and then wire this font into UV layout's second slot here. And on our UV layout SOP, let me just drag this down and scroll down here under the target section here. I can choose not only to pack this into this rectangle here ranging from 00 to 11, but I can also choose to pack this into the islands from the second input. And what that means is when I set the UV attribute properly, so in our case, we're not caring for UVs, but we're caring for the position P. What that means is Houdini will then pack my geometry into this geometry that's coming in to the second slot here. And I think this could even pack a bit more densely. So let's increase our point number here on the scatter SOP to maybe 200, yeah, like this. And furthermore, in the UV layout SOP, I can choose if I want to allow Houdini to actually scale my geometry here. So it is currently set up to allow UV layout to scale. However, I can also set this option to fixed and Houdini won't scale my geometry in here. And you can see what happens. On the one hand, we're staying true to the geometry size coming in here through this SOP. On the other hand, Houdini doesn't manage to pack everything into this geometry that I piped into my SOP here and arranges the unpacked geometry neatly in a long string below our target geometry. So what we'd have to do is maybe group this with a box and delete everything that's outside of this box here. However, for now, what I can do is on the one hand, allow more finely rotations and in the advanced section, maybe increase the search resolution and also maybe the iterations in order to neatly pack this geometry into our target geometry. And that is your very, very quick intro to the UV layout SOP. And although in this case, it looks like a one trick pony, this thing is really, well, at least a two trick pony in the sense that it on the one hand can do these nice geometrical packings, also with three dimensional objects, mind you. It'll just project them and their contour onto a flat surface. By default, that is set up to be the X, Y plane. So instead of flat letters, you could also use whatever geometry you like here. Same goes for the target geometry. Just keep in mind the UV layout is optimized for two dimensional packing. So it'll just pack the silhouettes. So it can be used for that. And of course, it can be used for the traditional thing that means finding your optimal UV layout for your textures. I really like this sub for what it is. 
for what it can do. And it's one of those nice small additions to Houdini 17 that are really useful even for motion design. If you'd like to get more in-depth knowledge about Houdini, you might want to head over to our Patreon, we've got lots of materials there. And with that being said, a huge thanks to all of our patrons who make that possible, especially to Hyoko Sakane, Martin Ogren, Joseph Howerton, Derek A. Johnson, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol, Rob Bryant Jr., and Mohamed Alabri. Thanks so much, guys. As always, I'm very much looking forward to seeing your guys' artwork, and until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.